Although our liver is responsible for the majority of the metabolism of amino acids that occurs inside our body, other organs and tissues can also break down amino acids and then use the carbon skeleton byproducts for energy. And one example of such a tissue is our muscle tissue. So if we're undergoing prolonged exercise or if we're fasting, our skeletal muscle tissue can actually begin to break down branched chain amino acids such as valine, isoleucine, and leucine. And then we form carbon skeletal intermediates and then those are used for energy purposes. But of course, every time we metabolize amino acids, we form nitrogen as a byproduct. More specifically, we form ammonia. And as this process continually takes place, we build up the amount of ammonium that is present inside our skeletal muscle cells. Now, ammonium is toxic, and so what the skeletal muscle cells must do is they must be able to dispose of that ammonium. Now, unlike in the liver and to a smaller extent in the kidney, where we have the urea cycle to basically dispose of that ammonium, inside the skeletal muscle cells, we don't actually have a way to dispose of ammonium directly. And that's because the urea cycle does not take place inside the muscle. And so our body actually has two ways by which it can get rid of this ammonium from our skeletal muscle. But ultimately what the skeletal muscle cell must do is it must be able to transport that ammonium back to the liver where that ammonium can be fed into the urea cycle. And one of these pathways is known as the glucose alanine cycle. And this will be the focus of this lecture. So let's suppose we are fasting, eventually we begin to break down the branch chain amino acids into, this into the carbon skeleton intermediates and then we form ammonium as a byproduct. Now ammonium must be transformed into some other molecules. So we must have some type of carrier molecule that ultimately transports through the blood to the liver. So the ammonium must be combined with pyruvate. Now, where do we get the pyruvate from? Well, inside our muscle, we have glycogen storages. We break down the glycogen to glucose and we break down glucose into pyruvate via glycolysis. So we generate ATP. That ATP can be used by the cell and the pyruvate can also be used to actually combine it with ammonium to form glutamate and then glutamate is transformed into alanine. And actually, this is the reverse pathway that we discussed in the previous lecture. So previously, we discussed how we can break down alanine into ammonium, but now we see how under other conditions, we can actually do the reverse. We can take the ammonium, combine it with pyruvate to ultimately form that alanine. And it's the alanine that is transported out of the cell into our bloodstream and that ultimately is absorbed by hepatocytes, our liver cells. Now, once the alanine moves into the liver, the alanine basically undergoes this pathway, but in reverse. So we begin with alanine. Alanine then is formed into glutamate, and then that breaks down into pyruvate and ammonium. So ultimately, what happened is the ammonium that we used here, or that we formed here, eventually made its way to the liver and it's the liver that uses the urea cycle to basically help our body dispose of this toxic substance. Also notice though that we form pyruvate and it's in the liver that we undergo gluconeogenesis. It's in the liver where we undergo gluconeogenesis. And so pyruvate is used to form glucose and the glucose that we essentially used here is then transported back into the skeleton muscle via the bloodstream. So ultimately, even though we used a glucose here to uh, form that pyruvate and we used that to essentially attach that ammonium and then transport it via the bloodstream via alanine, the glucose is ultimately returned back to the skeletal muscle tissue. So all that happened here is we ultimately transported this ammonium to our liver.
Now, this is known as the glucose alanine cycle. We call it glucose alanine because we utilize a glucose here to form pyruvate to use it to actually attach that ammonium and form that alanine. That's why we call it the glucose alanine cycle. It cycles between glucose and alanine, but it's ultimately returned back to its source, the skeletal muscle cell. But the ammonium is transported into the skeletal, into the liver, it's not returned back to the skeletal muscle. Now, so the glucose alanine cycle is one pathway by which we can transport the ammonium from our target tissue, our uh, skeletal muscle tissue, to our liver. But there's another method, and that utilizes an enzyme known as glutamine synthetase. So glutamine synthetase is an ATP-driven enzyme. It uses ATP to basically attach the ammonium that we formed here onto glutamate to form glutamine. And glutamine, just like alanine, can move into the bloodstream, ultimately move into the hepatocytes, our liver cells, and then the glutamine can be broken down into glutamate, releasing ammonium, and the ammonium can be fed into the urea cycle in the same exact way. So these are the two pathways, the methods by which once we form the ammonium inside our skeletal muscle tissue, we can transport that ammonium into the liver where the liver uses the urea cycle to basically dispose of that toxic substance.